share. The recording is now officially on, and we are well. Yes. We're a half hour into our usual usual time. Yes. <clears throat> um, Fill us with the link for January fourth, twenty twenty three. And Bentley, do you see the uh, Nagara link in the chat, or should we post that for you again? Uh, I think yes. Okay. That's the fish talk. Yeah, it says five online, so I think you're in there. Yeah, there. Cool. Uh, Jitsi's chat is persistent more more than Zoom. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. I mean, uh, yeah, at Zoom you only get. The chats that have been since you've been on, but in Jitsi, they I think they you get all the ones since the beginning of the meeting when you could pop in. Oh, interesting. So this is a Jitsi hedge doc? No, no, I'm just no. saying in the Jitsi chat. Oh, okay. They, they put the link in the Jitsi chat. So. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a bit more sensible history wise, actually. Um, I like that uh, behavior. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, there's data implications. I used to work on, in a chat product. There's a lot of like privacy implications with like showing any message that you know was sent before you joined. In the case of uh, you know whatever people don't particularly uh, get along. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But this is not the case here, so this is great. Interesting. <laughs> yes. um, two things that might be interesting to the group. One is um, Paul Roney of Cosmic is interested in picking up uh, the Tools for Thinking podcast because we're kind of wrapping up season one of the podcast and Betaworks is kind of done with its tools for thinking and its think camp. Um, so they're kind of stepping aside and Paul was like, hey, this is this is a cool thing. You've got a small audience growing. It's uh, the audience is very small. The, the number of listens and all that is, is pretty low. But we've gotten lots of interesting in individual feedback from people like, oh, this is awesome. Let's like, let's keep going. And also, I think there's a, a nice resonance in multiple communities that we're all part of and, and care about. So Paul and I are rethinking how the podcast might work. Um, and I suggested multiple hosts and multiple threads and sort of a, an umbrella topic where we could have different people step in and either just do an episode or pick up a thread and start a sub-thread. Like, like there could be a Tools for Thinking geeky channel that has its own podcast thread, which is about the code and about the standards and protocols and about whatever. And there could be a, a different one that covers different kinds of topics. I don't know, but I'm interested in who, who would like to participate and how much. We're probably going to, I think we're having a call in a couple of days, and then we're going to put out a call to our communities that says, anybody interested, please show up. And then offer, you could, you could host an episode, you could host a channel, you could do whatever, whatever. And also, we'd like to use tools for thinking heavily in the podcast because it's a podcast about tools for thinking. Um, but... His initial passion and interest, this may interest you a lot, Chris, is the early visionary documents of computing, sort of uh, JCR, Licklider, Licklider, Ted Nelson, Doug Engelbart, unfortunately, mostly white men. Um, but these documents that sort of describe what's possible and where what our future might look like if we have these cool novel tools uh, create... Cre Working with those documents and those ideas to make them more accessible to increase computer literacy about computer history, assessing those documents in terms of um, what came true and what didn't, where are the flaws. And one of our podcast episodes early on hit that territory, the one that Paul was on, where we were like, hey, if you look at the, for instance, if you look at the Macintosh Finder, the earliest versions of the Finder were more faithful to early renditions of what was possible and they and apple kept like removing features and possibilities from the finder that's interesting um and you know wh where else might that go how else might that work i'm particularly interested in what about these um visions can inform our future like like wh what can we build better whiter brighter faster more better for society because of these these visions and what modern visions are showing up that take us new and interesting places. So that I, I'm that's kind of my the piece I'm I'm uh, more interested in. Um, I'll stop I'll stop now. But but that's on the table and we're uh, excited. Um, my ability to participate in spending a lot of time there sort of depends on my fundability with Ev, my backer. Um, so I, that's that's still I'm still trying to sort that out. But that's my hope. 
that sounds uh, amazing, Jerry. That's great news. The there's one. Well, there's a, there's was a a point where folks were doing a thing called microcasting, and some still do it. So it's essentially a podcast that's typically like 10 or 15 minutes or shorter. Um, and it was, I don't know, it reminds me of like an early version of Seismic, but a distributed one where people weren't doing it in one space. And it was kind of creating conversation. And most people were doing it from their own websites and distributing it out. And then the tough part becomes, how do you discover it and find it? Um, but I've got a, fr a friend in Ireland who made kind of a centralized service that's kind of like, um, it's like a book, essentially it's a bookmarking service for audio called Huff Duffer. Mm -hmm. um, that's funny. And you can create an account and save things to it. And essentially when you're on a page that has audio, you click a bookmarklet and it essentially saves that audio to your account. But the account automatically creates RSS feeds for everything that has it incoming. So there's an RSS feed for me as a user. There's an RSS feed for all the people I'm following on the service. There are RSS feeds for every tag that exists on the service. So if you used a tag like tools for thinking as an example, you could follow that as an RSS feed and then it becomes a distributed service that anyone can create a podcast and tag it with that and put it into that system and then get a feedback out. Um, so I think the end indie web actually uses it. If you tag anything with the word indie web, that's an audio podcast, it automatically puts it into that feed and sh it shows up automatically in the newsletter every week. Um, but if you wanted to create a distributed version, anybody could create a podcast of any length, put it in there and tag it. And then suddenly everyone could see and read it. That's super um, interesting. But it becomes a way for people, anybody who's interested in that tool of thought to not have I mean, there's benefits to curation and the gatekeeping part of we're going to have this as a topic. Um, but then you may also get more community interest in throwing it into a place that isn't gatekept in that same way. Um, mm -hmm. And then it also opens up the format to is it one person talking? Is it three people? Is it a group conversation and the format can go anywhere from a few minutes to you know multiple hours if people really wanted to do that um love that and i love how the name of the service is uh built on high frequency direction finding or huff duff yeah mm. back in But the day. it's a fun it's a fun little service that you know and i usually i use it in a bookmarky sort of way but i also take the stuff that gets posted there and it shows up on my site as, you know, either bookmarks of things I want to listen to or things that I actually have listened to. So there's a bunch of little amplification tools or enhancement tools. Um, so like Doc Drop from Hypothesis, which I really like, because you take a YouTube video and you drop it in and, and Doc Drop and suddenly you have the transcript married to the video and that's, that's just really <laughs> useful because the transcript is searchable, blah, blah, blah. Um, there are several of these kinds of things. It would be nice to have them talk to each other or collaborate or play together more nicely. And then Pete Kaminsky um, is really interested in early this year. He's, he was like, one of the things I want to, one of the projects I want to jump into more <coughs> is um, tools that take like a raw YouTube video and automatically enhance them. So uh, he and Bentley. Uh, a couple of years ago as part of OGM, created tools that strip the links out of uh, Zoom chats and make them available as a, as a web page or whatever else. So that's, that's one thing that you can do. And there's a bunch of other things you might do. So I think that that, that space could turn into a little indie web kind of suite um, of tools that might be really, really um, powerful and useful to a lot of people. 
Interesting. So to me, this seems like the problem on some level is shaped similarly to, well, federation. So, you know, I guess uh, this actually ties in with what we were discussing just uh, with you joined, Jerry, about like potentially better integration with the Fediverse when it comes to like searching, building a, search, a, Fedi, a Fedi search, for example, that will let you know when uh, people in your uh, social graph have already like annotated, read, shared, uh like a URL or like discuss an entity a person etc if cool. you think about it like compared to the hour or something like like it that's really Wikidata. yeah and on the other uh, that's on one level on another level another bridge maybe could be with uh things uh like uh carly causes promnesia i don't know you know it or like there's a um a few of these uh, like suites that let uh, users like, for example, like manage dumping data from all the services they use, uh, which is related to the bridge space. So it's sort of like individual, uh, oh yes, it's uh, Promnesia. Uh, it's, uh, there's at least one more entity like this, but this is essentially, uh, it will be like wow. set of tools, set of tools that let you do uh, siphoning or bridging huh. uh, at the individual level, which is like, uh, of course, even uh, in agreement with terms of service and so on, usually. Oh, wow. So, yeah, Carly Cos is in the hour. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he's, he is uh, amazing. <laughs> yes. And there's at least one more tool like this uh, or, or repository uh, of tools. Um, and uh, in general, uh, here I think we're like, you know, annotation, archival, and, and federation, um, and the aggregation of resources into like, uh, end, you know, end results like podcasts, uh, seem related. Uh, also, just shortly on um, uh, the podcast, product, product, uh, podcast production aspect. Um, so um, it will be uh, interesting. You said like a challenge associated with like podcast episodes. And they, I have discussed with some uh, friends earlier, perhaps also here with you, uh, which I consider my friends as well, uh, here in the fellowship, um, like uh, tools for going from voice messages in a room to like a podcast draft, essentially, or, uh, you know, like a lightweight uh, a podcast production pipeline. That seems like it could be easily implemented in Telegram and Matrix, for example, at least. Uh, but I don't know, of course, he, uh, I don't know uh, about Mattermost, but, you know, something like this. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, yeah. and then it's interesting then, uh, just thinking out loud, um, Lots of people take daily notes or take notes, active notes during meetings and conversations. I do it in my brain. But how does that trail of, uh, how, how does that digital trail from a conversation online connect in to daily notes and other sorts of notes as, that are as hopefully as public as possible? And how does that, that turn into a shared asset that doesn't get too thorny, tangly, confusing, uh, but gets more useful over time? That would be really cool. Exactly. Yes. And, and this is where, in my experience, a lot of the, the tools already in this space, they, of course, like require one time setup, but they also don't integrate. They don't do it. You know, they don't uh, co-work. They don't uh, collaborate. So there's a high cost. And, you know, they, like it happens in open source space very often. There's many implementations and uh, they aren't uh, in it themselves, each very polished. Mm -hmm. This is, again, where, like, if we could uh, bootstrap some level of coordination for, you know, let's integrate a bunch of tools in this space and give them like a unified sign-up flow, control surface, etc. Maybe we could add some value there uh, and bootstrap our community more more easily. All that. Um, uh, on the podcast, that sounds very interesting, by the way. I'm yeah. Super interesting. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in particular in how uh, you know people are socializing from like in this distributed way, right? So, so from like individual gardens, not walling them, or even like uh, being just part of the wall garden that uh, maybe some tools are trying to set up, but going beyond. I think we see this pattern of, you know, leapfrogging a bit uh, to some extent, the wall gardens that, that some groups are, you know, driven by market pressure maybe <laughs> and capitalism, uh, trying to like erect or, you know, uh, or, or hold to. And I think already uh, several people, essentially the nice thing is that, uh, you know, the individuals uh, probably have the tools for most tools to actually uh, uh, do so. And like collaborate regardless of which tools they're using. You know, this is my, my dream. 
Me too. Me too. Um, pragmatically, also, by the way, uh, one thing I'd love to do is figure out how do how do um, brain and agora meet in some some neutral ground somewhere? Or yes. yeah, like like how do we do that? How do we how, how can we implement yes. that? My uh, uh, however you you think uh, we could. I mean, uh, I'm finishing personally with uh, our chapter very very soon. You know the chapter. <laughs> this is like. Yes, hopefully. Yay. Yeah, I actually took the day off today from work and then, but I was on call for second level. Yeah. I got paid and I worked half a day. But anyway, ah, tonight it happens, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's fine. It was interesting. So it's fine. Good. But like, uh, I finished with that. And then I, I would like to shift to Agorai, you know, which is the idea of like, you can host an Agora in this domain. In this domain. It's sort of like, a, you know, the prefix, it will be like photo Agorai or, you know, uh, brain Agorai. So like a Reddit, subreddit. I guess. Sort of concept, yep, and uh, and, and some inter anyway, we can discuss uh, it. Could be that, or it could be just like implementing some uh, of the uh, agora like concepts of interconnecting gardens uh, in some other tool. So, the, the higher you know, the, the wider concept, yeah, exactly. Jerry's brain uh, could, could work perfectly fine. Uh, you tell me, and we can I can set up like a demo, and uh, and then you you give it a try and see, you know, whether. It's a base you want to build on. It's all open source, uh, or it's something that you know. Perhaps you want to cherry pick some aspects into uh, some other uh, pipeline. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, will, that we could, we could probably target in the month for that. I don't and, know. And so so sorry. So are you saying it's easy to set up a subdomain or some some space in Agora that I could go use directly, or are you saying there's a way for me to add things to the brain and have them populate <clears throat> space on the Agora? Yes, the second. I mean, oh, uh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, the idea with Agora is the following. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know if I ever uh, said this out loud, but it's like here. The idea with Agora is once, one time you sign up the income, the inbound flows, and then you just keep using the tools you want, essentially. Awesome. Right? It's like, uh, of course, you know, it, many edge cases, but uh, yeah, yeah. it works for the core journeys. And the storage, and of and course, the storage yeah. format inside of Agora is which? So the default is uh, just markdown. Or image file, but markdown for text uh, in a Git repository somewhere. But it also supports uh, org mode. Yeah, and we can add text and fabulous. Uh, uh, and some, yeah, it, it's very straightforward. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then it's like whenever you update a repository, it gets reflected within uh, 30 seconds, or if it's cached, 15 minutes. But essentially, you can forget about it as, for as long as you want. Yeah. Uh, yes, and uh, of course, like, uh, oh, yeah, uh, you know, I guess I'll share it. Uh, it um, a, an outline of, you know, the presentation I've been working on, which is the chapter is, is available, uh, which could, uh, you know, the interaction may, may do for like something, uh, you know, uh, I could uh, discuss in like a segment or something. If you're interested. Sweet. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, anyway. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm just asking. Thank you, thank you. Very cool, man. Oh, while I'm thinking about it too, Jerry, I I wanted to say thanks for putting all the podcast stuff on the wiki because I think that was a a richer, nicer source of material. Really, any other of the versions that I saw, uh, it had better notes and details i mean i think it had everything except for an embedded mp3 of the audio oh thank you i dug out from somewhere else but i'm very pleased you said that that that's uh thank you makes the whole effort worthwhile i will yeah, share nice. a link to the page that i think you're referring to in the chat yes thank you it, it took me a minute to find it yeah i have not I, I have not publicized it much so i was digging around really for the the audio files so I think I think you, I think you mean this page on the relate wiki, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the subsidiary pages for individual episodes. Exactly. So this page um, has a directory basically to all the episodes. But for, for me, that was yeah. Thank you. God. Okay. That that yes. is very that is very heartening. And in fact, I, in fact if it's a, go ahead. If it's a wiki too, it also makes it easy for other people to add episodes. So with it's access a, to that as a thing too. So I'm using massive wiki here, which is Pete Kaminsky's wiki, which is ironically, to my mind, not really a wiki. Um, it's using GitHub. <laughs> it's using GitHub for version control, which is awesome, yes. which gives you the wiki control version control of wiki. 
but it has no editable front end unless you know how to edit a Markdown document on GitHub, which means I'm using Obsidian, but you could use your favorite Markdown editor or the built-in GitHub mark, you know, editor or whatever. But that means you have to be sort of geeky to be able to wiki participate in this wiki. That said, it'll obey pull requests, the whole, you know, like all of that stuff works because we're using the infrastructure to do that. Um, so yes, with, ca with geek caveats. Um, but the idea is exactly that. The idea is, and the template I used, I basically figured out what order I wanted to put things in, and I, then, then I just started replicating the most recent of the episode pages to make a new page. That's all I did. Um, the template is kind of crappy and really simple. And I look at Andy Matushek's uh, like, like pages on, online, I'm like, they look really good. How do I, yes. how do I get his production value, right? Um, I'm, un, I'm unclear what he's using or what he's working with, but I, I kind of need to mm. level that up and change the template. And then once you make it long because, oh my God, I found something else that's cool. And you'll notice at the very bottom, it says other people's notes. And I've got John Borthwick down there, but I only have one of his Rome notes as images only uh, on one of the episodes. So I, I, I need, so there needs to be like a garden for everybody else's notes to be easily easily findable also on these pages nice. because the thing i'm really interested in is what did somebody else think about this how does this how does this weave into their world into their work into their you know uh what, what disagreements do they have with the things we said that's the most interesting part of it the template is really just unpacking as much as possible where do you find this episode what right. links did we refer to that kind of thing and I manually outputted the links fault, the links mentioned in the conversation by looking at what I had note, how I took notes in my brain and, and doing most of those, uh, outputting those. And then I had to manually turn them into markdown links. So that was kind of a, a bit tedious and could easily be automated better. Mm, yes. Interesting. Uh, and to make things a little more complicated, we've been shooting those We've been recording those podcasts on Riverside.fm <clears throat> instead of on Zoom. So we don't really have a chat during those calls, which is too bad. Um, hmm. And uh, I, I think that with season two under Paul slash me, I think we're going to abandon Riverside and go back to Zoom so that the production value is lower, but it's easier. The reason we went to Riverside was that the producer of the original season, uh, Josh Elster, who's lovely and excellent, said, hey, all video podcasts look like Zoom and people hit them and they're like, oh God, I don't want to listen to another Zoom call. <laughs> so we switched to something that was more malleable and looks different. Uh, full disclosure, I work on Google Meet. <laughs> and like we said, it's like actually <laughs> makes me think of something, you know, related. So there's like a potential for um, <laughs> Uh, uh, improving the space, yes. Uh, and and so I meet I use Meet now and then. I'm not as facile with it as I am with Zoom. I have never recorded a call in Meet. Unfortunately, someone decided that it was a great idea to charge for that and not offer any recording for uh, anything by enterprise users. And I think that's oh, not great. Actually, bad idea, terrible idea. If if 2023 goes per like the basic cold, yes, I'm gonna do something to fix that. Yes, but and how do we help you? Thank you. It probably won't work, but I, I'll let you know. Don't I'll say let that. You know. Don't For example, say that. like, I, okay, if we could get like a, you know, if, if I could, sh if you don't mind me sharing Please. this use case for production, because I know a, 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 a very good product manager in Stockholm, actually. Oh, for sure. Of course. Please share this, this use case. No and problem. he's precisely all about how to increase, uh, you know, production values yeah. and, and streamline a pipeline from a meeting to a, an artifact. So my normal process, at least three times every week for the last three years-ish, or it hasn't always been three, is I finish a Zoom call. An hour later, I get an email from Zoom that says, hey, your recording is here. I go to Zoom. I download the damn files to my hard drive. I, I then upload the files to, to YouTube, right? It's like, if this was in Google Meet, and Google is not smart enough to do this, I don't think, yet. But if I could say, hey, by the way, um, yes. when we've got the recording, just just post it to YouTube with these meta tags automatically and, and the title of the episode yes. and all that, we're halfway like to saving a whole mess of time and disk space and everything agree. else. Yeah, I completely agree. And I have had related conversations. But I, I cannot promise anything, but I will do my best, essentially, if this is useful to you. You can, you can clip yeah. this recording, like, yes. you know, when you, when you, if you need evidence or testimonials, 
Use yes. this recording and like show them. Cool, cool. Uh, so I think that's like as a consent to share. Thank you. There's at least three people out here who want to use that, which makes a market as yes. far as I can tell. Yeah, and I think if you do it right, of course, it should be uh, compatible with many different inputs and outputs to put somewhere. Exactly. And then once you've got that problem solved, mm -hmm. if you can create themeability on top of video, Yes. So that yeah. I can use Google Meet and flip a switch to say, make it look like Zoom, make it look like Microsoft, make it look like something else customizable that I put my own CSS on. Yeah. yeah. Then you've really got something. Yeah. Uh, yes, I agree. Uh, and, or really... you can use it for all kinds of entertainment purposes and do, you know, because right now there's four of us. So there are mm -hmm. ideally four camera feeds and four audio feeds. If I can take those individual streams and remix them in any way I want, you know, you're you're getting into some of the, you know, vi video switching technologies that so get pretty dense and heavy. But this rapidly gets complicated because, for example, in oh, nice, wow, um, this rapidly gets gets complicated because, for instance, in music sharing, there's there are sub communities where they share multi track recordings of songs. And so anybody else who's busy riffing on them can turn channels on and off, remix, add filters, do whatever the hell they want uh, in really super interesting ways. Completely, yes. I, I think it's an exciting space. I'm actually happy uh, to work in this space, although I work more on reliability, but I'm interested in, and I think in general, like this will, will uh, happen either, uh, you know, held by corporations which are aware or just owned by the community. So. It's a matter of time. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Very nice. Love that gif. Uh, <laughs> uh, can I interject just something? I, I was just about to share the tools for thinking podcast on Mastodon uh, on the Fediverse, I should say. And uh, are you on the Fediverse, Jerry? Because I cannot find you. I I have a mass. I have two Mastodon accounts. Uh -huh. I don't really use them. I I don't have a rhythm to use them. I have a tab open right here. Um, where I can come back into it, I'll find you. What's your uh, share your yes. share your link it's in the chat here, fancy. and I'll just connect with you there, and then you can. That find would be me. awesome. Yeah, and I, I want to tag you there also to like help people find you there. And I have posted almost nothing there, so if something pulled me into posting, I would do that. Uh, that would be awesome. And uh, you know, Chris is there. Uh, I don't know, uh, Bentley, if you are there. So Flan I Flancy and I have just yes. added you. I'm, Thank you. Uh, yeah, Thanks Bentley Davis, tool, Tools for Thoughts rocks. Yeah. Yes. Nice. And I'm on Tools for Thought rocks as well, because that, ah, like, nice. that seemed like a good one. I am uh, Jerry with a three at Tools for Thought rocks, And I, I'm just staring at the Mastodon interface going, where do I pick up my email, at my, my Mastodon address? Because I don't have it memorized. And I, don't, I don't think I have it in a macro in my little uh, text expander. Yes. I wasn't finding you because I didn't know the three. Uh huh. Yes, exactly. I did that just yeah. to try to, to try to be unique on servers. Yeah, account search is like a so optimally in Mastodon. It doesn't do this well. In Aguara, it doesn't do it there. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't complain. <laughs> yes. um, Thank you. I will share this name. My Mastodon handles. Okay, good. So um, I can recommend. Well, I recommend. I, I do cross posting uh, from Twitter to Mastodon another way. Some people like it. Some people don't. I think it's a net positive overall. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, and that can also help you help people find you because it's like you know, like it it, it produces the ripples, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And the, and early, one of my early Twitter stories, very early in Twitter, is that I had some utility that cross posted from Twitter to Facebook, so that every one of my tweets went to Facebook. Mm -hmm. And one day I was in South of Market and I left a really interesting meeting about the cash healthcare economy which is some people just buy only reinsurance for, for catastrophic care, and then they, they do everything else cash. And it turns out that if you walk up to the cashier's window in a hospital and you say, I, 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 like, I know that you're, in, you're billing me for like $5,000, but I will give you cash today now for $1,000 or whatever. Like the discount is crazy. But, but hospitals like cash in the bank right this second, and they will yeah. negotiate down tremendously. And, this, and so, so I tweeted, I only tweeted, just left a meeting about the, the cash healthcare economy, which was fascinating. That's it. Two days later, 
on Facebook because of this link, I get a 10 paragraph uh, message from an acquaintance, not a friend, who says, oh, I took my family off healthcare uh, a decade ago. It's been really good. This is what happened. And I'm like, I had no idea there was anybody in my circles who knew that. It was one of my early like, wow, this is really powerful moments. Yeah, completely. I mean, in general, like my, my current uh, position is because of how social media set up as a broadcast uh, medium um, and because of the, you know, there's already uh, like you know, essentially spam or, you know, like, well, spam uh, and, uh, you know, an overproduction of uh, data, which is not particularly interesting to, to oneself, maybe a majority, it's fine to just post by default. Uh, and, and essentially uh, the, uh, lean on people's clients and setups to like filter out or in. So, so essentially cross posting by default seems to be optimal. Yeah. yeah. Bentley, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Talk to you guys later. Um, Talk to you. One of the things I'm realizing is that I don't do enough of is related to what you were just saying, Flancian, which is um, I use Readwise, except I do nothing with everything I send to Readwise. So, um, so I highlight. I highlight things in Kindle and mm -hmm. I connect that to Readwise, but then I don't go use those quotes because it's two steps behind the curtain to get there and yeah. do it. And one of my beefs in the world is that it's really hard to point to a sentence in a book that would solve my problem, but I'm not actually doing it. Right. Cause I could, cause I could take a Readwise quote and take that permalink and put it in my brain as the link to the quote. And that should work. Right. Yes. Same, same thing with hypothesis. I don't use hypothesis much. It lets you highlight and comment on and get a permalink to a, a block of text on a page. Do I use it? No. Right. Exactly. It's like, uh, and this brings me back to this um, this article by Fernando that you shared on like you know maybe it's fine that not everything is integrated anyway. Yeah. I go back and forth on that one because for me integration it just. So, uh, my my priority is that it sets my mind at ease because I know that I can I, I can I, I I have like a reproducible uh, way of getting to presumably uh, the whole of my production or interlinking. Um, so yeah, but um, it, but I it was interesting that um, uh, that share as well that other take. Um, there's a few our users which uh, already sync. Um, um, Sync to the uh, sync uh, rewise. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, it's it's kind of interesting and disconcerting because if we manage to cross post a lot and link these things up and connect up the feeds and the power tools, that's phenomenal. But a little you've got to now in your head manage mm -hmm. and remember yeah. what's talking to what. Otherwise, really embarrassing things happen. Uh, also, yes. Um, but then if you couple that with chat GPT and the future that is like now here mm -hmm. yeah. of soliciting help from power tools like those, then it's going to take a tremendous amount of neural flexibility to live in that world. A neural flexibility that I'm feeling like I'm going to have to learn up into mm -hmm. and that maybe like new, new humans born into the world right now that take this for granted will just take for granted, right? And they'll they'll have that capacity. But there could be, it, it used to be, I remember a day when computers became normal in workplaces where there was an age for men, and it was somewhere around 50 or 55 years old, where men above that age did not know how to touch type. Almost none of them. And you could see them struggling and suffering, and they aged out of the workforce. And, and for a while, there was a little embarrassing because they couldn't adapt to like email and stuff like that. And so there may be this other hump happening right now, which involves this neural neuroplasticity, neuro meldability with the Borg mm -hmm. that I think of as part of being a good cyborg or centaur, which is one of the thoughts I'm thinking these days. It's like, what does it mean to be a good cyborg? Um, a, a useful and like productive cyborg, right? Um, that is interesting. I don't know if you guys feel similarly, but I'm, I'm starting. I'm starting to feel it. Like yeah, no, it's. Uh, Go ahead. I, I see part of it too, even in using the brain. When I see pages of your brain, I know what your general format is in terms of how you specifically use it. 
and what to expect at the top of the page, the bottom of the page and the side. And so for me, see, when you share those links, it's much easier for me to get a quick picture of what's going on. And I don't have to pick out the jumble of links because I, intuitively I know what they mean because of where you place them and the views that you use. From your lips your to God's ears, with, thank you. Or the conventions you use with, uh, was it like yellow and purple? Yep, exactly. For mm -hmm. colors. So I, I have that I have that grammar now built into my mm -hmm. head of this is how Jerry uses the brain. But when I see how other people use it, or if I were to use it myself, I might make other choices with other views. And I think that becomes part of the problem that usually for me, the big problem is in a social media centric world, I might put a piece of information in Facebook and not in Twitter. And then six months from now, when I go looking for it, how easy is it to find in a general sense, much less which service did I put it on? Did I put it in Pinboard? Did I put it on Twitter? Did I put it, where was it? Yeah. Versus in your case, it's always in one spot. So Correct. it becomes a lot easier to find. Correct. Right. Um, my lookup my look doesn't involve where the hell did this happen or where the hell did I put this? My lookup never involves that. Yeah. And so those types of, there's, and as well, when you watch <clears throat> film, you can go look through the history of film and there is a, a development of a grammar of film for simple things like, you know, shooting day for night or mm -hmm. in the late eighties, early nineties, there was the three camera explosion set up. You always had three cameras shooting any explosion you made in a movie so that you could do the quick cut of here's how it looks from all the angles and use all that. And then that, you know, hundred thousand dollar explosion you had on film gave an additional like, value to your movie but the first couple of times that happened the 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 people watching it don't have or when you're watching the lumiere brothers and the trains coming at straight at the camera the crowd shrinks back because they don't understand the grammar of the film yet and i think there's that same type of grammar in online and right now the primary yes. grammar is a flow of text down a page so you can scroll right. infinitely so have you watched the youtube short that i shot that i just posted to the chat no because you just basically spoke it not quite verbatim nice uh yeah no i haven't seen it okay it's a one minute short is there a way we can play it together here that works does <laughs> jitsi does jitsi allow it should be nice it should we share video actually that's i wonder if this works can you try yeah thanks no, unfortunately, it hasn't been updated the this integration to use uh, to work with shorts. Oh, interesting. It's just a YouTube yeah. link. Oh, but it is it is in shorts. Interesting. Okay. Huh. I didn't think about that. Anyway, it's it's a one minute thing where I basically say, early movies put a camera on a tripod in front of theater because we knew what theater was. Then somebody said, hey, we could put the tripod on a dolly, and they invented the pan, <laughs> and then blah 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 to everything you just said. Although I didn't know about the three cameras on explosions at all. Yeah, and, I should, and I should add that to my brain. Or, or just the fast editing, MTV style Jump editing. Cuts. Yeah, th th yeah, exactly, exactly. There's a vocabulary <laughs> in the grammar that, that evolves and becomes the language of cinema, right? Yeah. Um, and so my claim in, in this thing is the, the, the interwebs are stuck on mainstream media metaphors. We have magazine articles, we have TV and radio, we have phone calls that luckily have video added, but we don't have a lot of other variety. Grammar and language. And then, uh, I, th this reminds me just surely of like uh, uh, Samuel Klein uh, and I were discussing uh, at some point, I believe, and also with uh, another friend, Armin Gold, who is like a, a Catalan artist, uh, about the grammar and language of like uh, tools, uh, you know, like people uh, apply to their notes. Uh, so, which converges with this and how we may need mental model translation, which is like a, I'm going back to AI and I saw the last, uh, well, I think the last episode. Or the previous to last uh, from the podcast was about AI, uh, or uh, one of the last. Um, and uh, you know how maybe uh, adapting from conventions 
is like something that is in our future, like automatically. So we can translate from like, you know, Jerry, Jerry's brain to uh, Chris's, uh, uh, you know, uh, Wolf of Soko conventions, essentially, uh -huh. or to our uh, convention according to Flans and also some other user. Um, and that could be by a machine learning, or it could also be if we agree on some way of codifying that. Like actually agree on a grammar description um, uh, to actually say, this is how I mention entities. This is how I share links, right? In my mouth, exactly. So, so I, I rem was reminded too, because I, I think it was either the first or, well, it was the second or third of the Tools for Thinking podcast jerry talked about kind of infinite canvases and being able to move around on them and the tool you were using eventually limited that and took it away okay. and it, it kind of made me think of how uh, uh google world does the 3d jump from one part of a country to another so that you get a sense of travel and movement across space. And I i don't know if it still exists. I have to really dig around to find it because it was a super crazy deep link. But I saw a web developer who created a massive, nearly infinite canvas on an HTML page and then put, you know, it essentially was a big murder board, but there were little stories that you could jump to. And he created the link so that a link would take you to a zoom in on that page nice. and then you could click to it and it would nice. scroll over automatically and there was kind of a scrolling movement so oh, interesting a sense of moving from one piece of the page and then it, but it would zoom in on each individual story yeah versus the you know and i i want to say it was sometime in 2012 and neil dash wrote an article about moving from individual pages on the web to the kind of infinite scroll we see in a lot of social media now because it benefits hmm. this, you know, surveillance capitalism, keeping your attention moving. Um, but I, we need more kind of visual grammars on the web, I think. Yes. To, yeah, definitely. to expand yeah. the space of what can we do. And we're, the problem is you get so stuck in the old grammars and they're so comfortable creating new ones is first not easy but then once you've created it how do you help fit it in to ease the cognitive dissonance of the new grammar you've created and there's a really big complication with my my premise i think our shared premise that the web is stuck in mainstream media metaphors which is that um, one of the legal and mental barriers is overprojection of ip and our internalized assumptions of what you can and cannot do around things like a book, mm -hmm. right? And, and so one of my beliefs is that books, books and PDFs are basically where information goes to die. And yet books are the highest cultural artifacts our civilization creates. Mm -hmm. But these things are contradictory because we overprotect the material that's inside books. These are like people's best ideas, which should be the commerce and 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 tangible artifacts of of, of, idea, of idea trade but they're not completely and like interlinking there like for example uh as it could be done if you just were able to say you know you can call this uh, th this is like a, you're reading a book paper and there could be a convention for example for to say you want to like call this page this is how you do it or uh, have uh, I mean, I, I dream of like being able to write in a book on in like something you print, uh, for example, like print out a wiki link, right? In a way that then can be easily like looked up using like a, you know, lens or some camera allowance. Sort of like the QR, what QR calls do in practice, uh, but with higher friction. So how do we fix this? We were talking about that earlier. <laughs> I mean, I think it's, this this yeah. seems like a perfect mission. This is much better than Sauron yes. and somebody's ring. I mean, seriously, what's up with the ring? Um, uh, this is a great mission for the Fellowship of the Link. I completely agree. I think, honestly, what I my, my proposal yeah. is that, you know, given that we started a new year, I don't know if you're like in calendar building mode, but I am. Yeah. Uh, for a house, start with a shared calendar, which means just like a plan, like a one place where we say, this is our plan for this year. This is our plan for 
the, the way I see the Agora personally, and uh, by default, I see the Agora as part of like as a device that we can use to accomplish our shared goals like this one. Uh, but you know, like standing in for any such device, I personally see it as a seven year effort huh? currently. So, uh, but you know, I think we could get like a pretty good, uh, my, my proposal and you know, like, I, my default would be something like Fedi search or like some federated search for the social media for resources. Right. This integration layer that like, could be a bit more user friendly if it, uh, and like, we'll have a chance to actually uh, give users a user journey that say a corporate uh, entity like Twitter won't, right? Uh, we could probably work on the uh, by to have that something like like this running by 2025. Um, will be my default. In the interest of goals and planning and stuff like that, I just shared a document that I was I, that I talked through in my previous conversation with my Romanian friends um, about bigger goals that I'm trying trying to set up, <clears throat> and the one through 12 that I think didn't reorder itself when I how do I get this document to oh it did okay good it showed up in proper order. Um, so I'm thinking about the months of this year, and and I've not created enough things over the last decade. So I'm like, how do I how do I pretend that I've been diagnosed with a terminal illness, um, and really like leave it all on the field this year? That's that's kind I, of that's kind of how yes. I'm starting to try to think because yes. I, I am in salon hosting relaxy mode, and that's not creating anything I could be doing. I have way too many ideas, and I don't know how to corral them. And I need to figure out how to make this thing stable so I'm not worried about income. But that's what I want. That's my where my passion is. So this one through twelve was a collection of pretty big chunks to take a bite out of, which might together make a picture of this world that I would like and I think we would like to inhabit. Um, and and this conversation is creating more such project ideas that I didn't have on that list that kind of fit in. But I would love all feedback, comments, thoughts, whatever. Uh, but this, this is, is this is how I'm thinking. This this sound, this looks amazing. Like I'm, sorry, I'm looking forward to reading this. My my, I think you did the right thing. Uh, you show by example essentially. I, but but my proposal, I mean, uh, applying our mental model to this nice. would be that we each write or like share our plan, independent plan, and then we do the mail. Uh, say by if we could do it by in next session or say by the end of the month. We, we, I mean, however you want. And see, you know, like the common the connection part, the connection points, and perhaps you know what, wherever we have a nexus, we have like a very highly ranked project. I would love that. That so works for me. This is an amazing motivation. That works for me. Um, the record. It's more than an hour. The recording has been recording, and it hasn't stopped. So no, because you started at half past. Oh, yeah. and I came into the so the call timer is actually for the whole call. Apparently. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we started at about twenty six, gotcha. so you got about ten minutes. Okay, good. Uh, too bad. I mean, because I wish I wish Jesse would fix that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, that sounds like uh, amazing, and I'm I will be happy to. I'm up for that discuss. entirely, and this document is the start of my plan, just like nice. that. So nice. <clears throat> I have mine on. Uh, I think I have it in revolutionary calendar. All right. Nice. <laughs> But uh, yes, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, put it in good shape for uh, next time. Hopefully. Awesome. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh, Chris, are you are you interested? Yeah, we can do that. Awesome. That sounds like a, a way to pull something off. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sitting here trying to figure out how do I how do I light a fire under my own ass to go get more things done that could feed this thing we want and then if you look down the page a little bit, it's got criteria. It's like mm -hmm. some of these things nobody else cares about but me. How do I attract more people to it? Or do I leave it behind because it's not interesting to others? Um, some of these things are a little bit dangerous, like like they're controversial or they might you know attract some, some, some uh, metaphoric gunfire. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, some of these things are not doable. Some of these things are easily doable. Those are all my variables kind of in the, in the mix. That sounds very interesting. Yeah, they are also info hazard to some extent. Yeah. Or for the things that aren't easily doable. I'm sorry, Chris? For the things that aren't easily doable. Oh. What's the rest uh, of your for, So for the things that aren't easily doable, how can you how can you write up enough <clears throat> of a description of what it is? Is an artifact to leave behind for someone else mm -hmm. to pick up, or at least exactly. see some 
experiments and what the direction was and then work on the things that you can work on until they're you know and having a list of um and i, I think it actually Feynman had a in particular a list of 12 problems he was always working on and when he finished one he would move it off and then find some other new problem but he always had a list of 12 specific things that he was working on oh. um, which helps to you know apparently focus your attention Feynman famously said you have to keep a dozen of your favorite problems constantly present in your mind although by and large they will lay in a dormant state nice exactly Wow. I, I, that's amazing. It's sort of like I listen in the direction of, well, many things, platform where I'm trying to explore like community to-do lists, you know, like uh, identifying problems that are, that are matched between our sets or like uh, in similar spaces. It has potential. And I, I even know programmers who use GitHub, not so much for the programming piece, but they'll have a handful of like areas like you've got, Jerry, and then they file issues or ideas against it as a means of keeping track of where yep. that particular problem is. Although there's obviously other ways you can do that. Yeah. It's interesting because the, I, I hack the brain to do a lot of these things for me in different ways, and then it taps out at some corners. But a piece of my wish list for an open global mind platform that's more flexible, that does more things, mm -hmm. is the ability to add different kinds of frames or different kinds of uh, I, I think of them as, I use the view graph metaphor. It's like when you go click, now when you just go click, you just see a new scene of, the, of whatever little uh, film thing you put in. But what I mean is you suddenly can pivot from looking at whatever data you were staring at as a brain view to Kumo view, to outline view, to uh, air table view. And all of a sudden, right. all of a sudden you're in table manipulation land, which is like exactly what you need for the new part of the problem. Like, the thing I should do with the one through 12 list on the bigger goals page I just shared with you is that should be a decision aid matrix, which should roll out and should then include for each cell, the variables that are in the, uh, uh, the variables that I listed down below. And that would help me kind of do a decision made out of, out of that, uh, decision matrix aid out of, out of that. But I'm on in markdown and obsidian, which, and I've done some tables in obsidian. They are very clunky. Yeah, yeah obsidian, own, obsidian is not a happy table making tool, um, right? So, 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 how does our informational environment seamfully switch between mm -hmm. the different kinds of things we need in order to express ourselves with each other and do the work? Completely. Yeah, in my experience, like some, something like obsidian works better for this. Is why I use trees a lot, like outlines. So if you you can pivot a table into a tree, essentially, but like, but it's clunky, yes. Um, and it could be, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of semantic wear promise, I guess, there, as in, you know, if, if you could only say this list is of intents, things I want to do, then that seems like it could be parsed by a tool, you know? Yeah. Uh, but until we get there, um, yeah, I, I think Markdown is actually not the, wor the worst uh, intermediate uh, format to save because uh, then, we, of course, we can presumably uh, write Markdown to you know, uh, to whatever tool and should, we write it once. Should we be saving in JSON instead of Markdown? Would that be a cleverer thing? So that's what uh, I think Boris Mann may think that is my representation of uh, his thought at least last year with the JSON LV, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or JSON, some other, you know, the thing that was developed by Condé Nast. By the guy from yes, Canada. that is the JSON AT yeah. or something like that. Yes, JSON. Yeah, exactly. I am. Uh, Currently, I'm convinced, uh, and and this is where like I think we uh, we we have discussion with Boris about this. Uh, I mean, because I just value personally human readability the most. Yes. Uh, because it seems to me that you know we can solve uh, that. Marlon has an, enough structure to to be you know to get us eighty percent of the way there, uh, and and that uh, and the popularity beats you know the uh, purity of having like you know a more uh a richer language to work with um but i i, I may be wrong mm -hmm. essentially we don't know at mm -hmm. jason yeah, you're right at jason yeah i think that's the one yes yeah. yeah, so um, uh, uh, but maybe uh what we want is to be able to say this is a blog post or this is a type of node and the original format is this uh, and then have like you know 
uh, be able to choose the canonical uh, eventually and then have like a converter from any to any. Uh, yes, um, trying to reduce uh, coordination costs, I guess, there. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yes, um, I, it, what, what looks to me, too, and I need to explore it more, but um, JSON format looks a lot like how Beatrice Webb used to take her notes. And she would, you know, in some sense, keep keyed pairs of here's this thing with this other thing that relates to it or metadata about it. And generally, she kept them on individual cards. So her JSON was written as those keyed pairs, one to each card, and then she would sift through them and reorganize them. And it's the same pattern that you see in like an Excel spreadsheet. It's just a slightly easier, more portable format. But I see a lot of people using a 